scientists in ancient Greece learned that if you rubbed amber or electron in the Greek language, it created a magnetic force that would attract light objects such as feathers. Viewed as a mere amusement, these ancient Greeks had no idea how to harness this force. It was not until roughly 200 years ago that scientists finally began to discover viable methods of harnessing electricity. Perhaps most famous was Benjamin Franklin, who in 1752 flew a kite in the midst of an electrical storm. He first noticed that strands of thread stood on end, as if suspended on a common conductor. When Franklin touched the attached metal key, he received quite an electrical shock. With this jolt, Franklin had proven that electricity was manifested in the clouds in the form of lightning. Franklin wrote in his own publication, Poor Richard's Almanac, that his invention of the lightning rod could secure houses from lightning blasts by directing the powerful bolt of electricity into the grounded metal rod instead of the structure itself. As Franklin's lightning rods appeared on homes across America, an outraged clergy remained vehemently opposed to the invention. They believed that lightning expressed the wrath of God and should not be tampered with. As knowledge of electricity grew, inventors saw that this awesome force could be stored for later use. They developed a groundbreaking energy storage device that would ultimately fuel the communications industry, the battery. The battery has really an interesting sort of impact on the development of electricity. On one hand, it provides that basic building block that allows for experimentation in telegraphy, in telephony, and, and even in, in early wireless telegraph. But the search for a usable battery was not a new one. There is speculation that a crude form of electrical battery may have appeared in the first century AD. In 1938, an Austrian scientist working in Baghdad uncovered a small pottery jar with a copper tube and iron rod running down its middle. Testing showed that the battery did emit small electrical charges, but not enough to provide any real source of power. Since it was discovered in what was clearly the house of a magician and medicine man, however, many others dismiss it as nothing more than a simple magic trick used to instill awe, perhaps even fear in all who saw it. The first authentic battery, as we know it, does not appear until the early 1800s, when Italian inventor Alessandro Volta created the first viable energy storage device. What it consists of is a, a pile of plates, and in fact it's sometimes called a Volta pile, because it's literally a pile of me metal plates uh, alternating uh, uh, copper and nickel or copper and silver uh, with uh, an acid uh, in between uh, copper and zinc, another pile. Um, and the bigger pile you make, uh, the more current you can get out of your battery. Volta's invention of the battery was truly groundbreaking. For the first time in history, the powerful force of electricity could actually be stored and used as a source of energy. In the middle of the 19th century, minor improvements were made to the battery. Now, known as wet cells, they basically consisted of a jar of acid with metal electrodes stuck inside. The acid caused a chemical reaction that produced electrons, which flowed through the metal electrodes to provide power to the attached device. Continual improvements were made to the battery. Inventors soon found it to be an indispensable device in their latest life-changing creations. The simple